up to three times, which is what, what is priced in right now, the interest rate differential will remain wide enough to continue to encourage the carry trade. So I think that the carry trade will persist and will move dollar-yen uh, well above 120, maybe towards 122 by the end of the year. Darius, this is Christine. Yeah, well, g give me your take on what you make of Fukui's comments. Did he give us any clues at all about interest rates? I don't think so. He hasn't said anything new. His major idea was that interest rates have to rise in order to prevent misallocation of resources that could be triggered by too low interest rates. But he has been saying that for, well, not, maybe not years, but for several months now. And uh, I don't see anything new in his statement. It's interesting to me that the vote to maintain the 0.5% interest rate was 8 to 1. A very, very strong majority, uh, Mizuno, who is a uh, persistent hawk voted for a hike and this means that the policymakers are really watching very closely developments in the US and uh, the impact of uh, demand uh, of, uh, from the US for Japanese exports and uh, if the US uh, does not rebound solidly by the time of the next meeting they may pause again but I think that the US market will rebound enough to encourage them for a, to, to hike rates in September. Why is that, Darius? It's Michelle here in the United States. Are you getting any sense that this credit market turmoil is finally calming down? Well, clearly, uh, yesterday <laughs> and today, all indicators of uh, risk aversion have declined uh, across various asset classes. Uh, now, the volatility that has uh, accompanied the decline uh, of the past few weeks was so large that uh, we may get another swing up in risk aversion. But it seems so far that uh, the problems will uh, have been pretty much contained. And if they are not, then the Fed will become more aggressive in helping the market. So either way, uh, the central bank w will help us or maybe will have helped us or has helped us already by cutting the discount rate. And because of the support for the market from the central bank, we may fairly safely assume that the markets will stabilize and therefore the, uh, they, they will not hit consumer spending in the U.S. The decline in equities will be, will be only temporary and, and this will allow the consumer in the U.S. to spend again and this will be favorable for Japanese and global growth outlook. Okay, Darius, you've given us your thoughts about you know, what the yen's going to do against the dollar. I presume that plays out against for the euro as well. What happens on the high yielders, the, the Aussie and the, and the Kiwi? You know, they, so got so much of a hit. Um, are they going to come back as well, or, or are they down and out? I think they will come back. Uh, the New Zealand dollar uh, lost uh, over 18% against the US dollar over the past several weeks. The, the Aussie lost 12%. Uh, the Aussie has recovered around 40% of that loss, and the Kiwi has recovered 30% of that loss. So um, we have had quite a rebound, and uh, we believe that the rebound will be particularly strong in case of the Aussie, because there is at least one more rate hike ahead of us this year in Australia. Uh, so our target for the end of the year is 0.85. Now, there is no further rate hikes uh, from from the uh, uh, from the New Zealand central bank, but the recovery will continue purely because of the carry trade, and we are seeing a New Zealand dollar at 0 0.75 by the by the by the end of the year. Darius, thanks very much, Dave, for that. Darius Kowalczyk, chief investment strategist at CFC Seymour.